Hey everybody, it's Miss Eubanks, and this week we are going to be learning about text structures. Um, this is a review. We studied this standard earlier in the year, so um, we just felt that it was important to review this standard. Um, as you get ready to go to fifth grade, this um, standard is a stepping stone um, for some of the standards in fifth grade. So it's very important that we review this and that you have a good understanding. So let's get started. So what is a text structure? Well, a structure is a building or framework. So a text structure refers to how the text is built. Um, writers use different structures to build their ideas. So each text structure communicates different ideas um, and in a different way. So let's take a look at them. Um, the fourth grade standard is describe the overall structure of the text, so whether it be chronological order, compare and contrast, cause and effect, problem solution, um, and main ideas uh, or description. Um, and you need to be able to understand how the events are structured, the ideas, the concepts, um, how the author displayed the information. So let's learn how we can use these skills to improve our reading comprehension. First up, chronological order. Authors use chronological order to explain how things happen in order. Chronological order is also called sequence or time order. So why might an author use chronological order to write about this frog? Maybe his life cycle or the steps he takes to create his nest or his habitat. Um, so just think about on all these text structures, why would an author use that type of text structure for this um, subject matter or um, concept and that helps you to understand how the author organized the information. You will know that you are reading a text in chronological order because you will see words like first, next, later, then, and finally. You will often see chronological order in directions. So this is sometimes where it's called sequence. Um, so let's read this text together. Have you ever made macaroni and cheese? It's simple. First, boil some water and make some macaroni. Then make your cheese sauce. After the cheese sauce is ready, mix it with the macaroni. Bake the entire thing in the oven. Finally, it's time to eat. So, can we find the clue words that help us to understand that this is chronological order? There they are. Um, and you can see that this after is it, it says this step after you do this then you move on okay so um, now let's practice which of these paragraphs is in chronological order so let's look at the first one Pennsylvania has many historic sites you can visit Revolutionary War sites like Valley Forge you can also visit important locations from the Civil War like Gettysburg finally you can also see the site of the first oil well in Titusville Pennsylvania has many neat places to visit. This one says, through the ages, Pennsylvania has seen many interesting events. The state was founded in 1681 by William Penn. Later, Pennsylvania was the site of important Revolutionary War battles. After that, Pennsylvania was home to new factories during the Industrial Revolution. Today, Pennsylvania continues to make history. So which one do you think is the chronological order paragraph? You said this one, you are correct. This is the paragraph in chronological order. What are your clue words? If you said through the ages, there's a date, later this happened, after that, and then today. Those are all words that signal time, that signal um, order of things. So very good. Next up, compare and contrast. Suppose an author wanted to explain how these two birds are similar and different. Chronological order won't work. So we need to use something different. We need to compare and contrast. So let's look at this paragraph. The cardinal and the goldfinch. This is the cardinal, the red bird, and the goldfinch is the golden color. The cardinal and the goldfinch are two common birds. Both are brightly colored. Both are common at bird feeders but the birds have some differences. 
male cardinal as a bright red, while the male goldfinch is yellow. Cardinals like shrubs and trees, while goldfinches prefer open meadows. When authors use the text structure of compare and contrast, they often use special clue words to show this text structure. Can you find the clue words in the paragraph? So you have both, which signals comparing, which means we're finding things that are similar or the same about the birds. Then you have some words that signal like the opposite um, that show differences, you know, so um, it says the cardinal is bright red while the male finch is goldfinch is yellow. So that signals a difference. Next up is cause and effect. Sometimes a writer wants to explain how one event leads to another. This kind of text structure is called cause and effect. When authors write paragraphs to show causes and effects, they use words like cause, effect, as a result, consequently, and so. And there are many others that we studied this year. So let's look at a paragraph. Can you find the clue words? The night snowstorm had many effects. People were out shoveling snow from their sidewalks. The power lines were draped with ice. Snow plows drove down every street. Children were the happiest of all. The unexpected snow caused school to be canceled. Too bad we didn't have a snow day this year. But can you find some clue words? The author did use the word caused and the effects. So the snowstorm was the cause and the effects were all of these things that were happening because of it. If it hadn't snowed, people wouldn't be shoveling snow. The power lines wouldn't be draped with ice and school wouldn't have been canceled. So the snowstorm was the cause and there were many effects. All right, let's look at another one. Baby painted turtles spend all winter in their nests. They have a special chemical in their blood that keeps their blood from freezing. As a result, baby painted turtles can survive freezing temperatures. Can you find the causes and effects in this paragraph? This is the cause. They have special chemicals in their blood that keep them from freezing. So the effect is because they have this, they can survive freezing temperatures. So that's great. They can stay safe through the winter. Next up is problem and solution. Sometimes an author will want to explain a problem and then show one or more uh, solutions. So a lot of people get this confused with cause and effect because a problem could be a cause. The difference is that there will be a solution that the author is showing or explaining a way to fix this problem, okay? Whereas when we were looking at cause and effect, it's just a cause and then what's happening because of that cause, whether good or bad. So let's look at some problem and solution. So here's an example of a problem and solution paragraph. Heavy rains can cause flooding in small streams. For weather forecasters and local authorities, this flooding can be difficult to predict. Fortunately, the United States Geological Survey, the USGS, has more than 7,000 stream gauges that measure water flow. These stream gauges help scientists to monitor water levels in good and bad weather. So what is the problem and solution in this paragraph? If you said this, for weather forecasters and local authorities, this flooding can be difficult to predict, you're right. And you see the word difficult, so that signals that something's wrong or troublesome. What's the solution? And then looking at this, the solution to the problem is that they came up with stream gauges that can help monitor the water levels um, in good and bad weather. So this helps them to predict. So again, this is a problem, then there's a solution to the problem. So some synonyms for problem that you might see in the paragraph might be difficulty or struggle, issue, worry, a threat, there might be trouble. So an author will use those words to indicate the problem. Not always though, so you just have to be able to read it and um, just understand that, oh, hey, that's something that's wrong. Some synonyms for a solution that you might see are possibility, a hope, a resolution, an answer, 
or something in the future that they might be getting ready to do. So those are some clue words that you could look for as you're reading the text to help you identify problem and solution. Let's look at another one. Have you seen these pesky bugs around? Oh, I do. Let's read about them. Brown marmorated stink bugs have caused many problems since they were accidentally introduced to North America. They damage fruit, bother people, and harm crops. Scientists are trying to find a solution. One promising possibility is a species of wasp that originally comes from Asia. This wasp is a predator of stink bugs. Scientists hope that this wasp could solve the stink bug problem. So what's the problem and what's the solution in this paragraph? Well, this is the problem, that these bugs are damaging fruit, bothering people, and harming crops. So there's a few problems that we have. Well, what's the solution? Well, the author says one possibility, um, so that's something that could come positively uh, impact, you know, getting rid of these bugs, is introducing a new wasp to um, our ecosystem. So as you can see, the author will name a problem and then a solution. All right, now let's get into description or main idea and detail. So this text structure is used to describe a location, idea, or event. So let's take a look. The pond was a beautiful place to visit. The falling leaves, all different colors, decorated the surface of the water. At the edges of the pond, small wildflowers grew. The golden forest glowed faintly in the distance. C, the main idea is that the pond was a beautiful place to visit. All the rest sentences support the main idea and just describe the pond. So they just tell more about it. So this is going to be your main idea. And then the rest is just going to give either more evidence or examples of uh, the topic that the author is, um, is discussing. Let's take another look. Sunsets. Sunsets are one of the most amazing things in nature that people love to watch. Sunset is the time of day when our sky meets the outer space solar winds. There are blue, pink, and purple swirls spinning and twisting like clouds of balloons caught in a whirlwind. The sun moves slowly to hide behind the line of horizon, which is the edge right here, while the moon races to take its place in prominence atop the night sky. People slow to a crawl, entranced, fully forgetting the deeds that must still be done. There is a coolness, a calmness when the sun does set. So this is our main idea that sunsets are amazing in nature and people love to watch them. That's our main idea. That's what this whole paragraph is about. And so then the rest of these are just describing more about the sunset. We get a little information about what they are. We get some information about what they look like. Um, so the author is just telling us more detail about sunsets. So description um, is just a main idea paragraph with lots of details to tell more about it, just to give us more information. So clue words in these paragraphs may be one reason or another reason or for example. And then you might see some words like uh, descriptive, you know, like telling where things are or um, how things go. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're reading your paragraph. So as you're reading, um, sometimes it's good to take notes on a graphic organizer. Now, sometimes when you're reading, guys, you could do this on your own notebook paper. Just draw a graphic organizer and kind of take some notes to help you find the information that you need. Um, so, you know, for description, your main idea goes here and then your details. Um, you could have your cause and effect, um, your Venn diagram for compare and contrast. The one with arrows is your time order um, or sequence. And then you have your problem and solution. So, you know, you can even draw these on your paper. So next time and this week, as you're learning and reviewing about text structures, guys, you might want to draw one of these real quick on your paper just to help you get some information from the text and help you to organize your thoughts. So it will help you locate, process, and understand the information that you're reading. All right, so let's reflect on what we've learned. 
This week, as you continue reading, pay attention to how the authors have built the text. It will help you to better locate and understand the information. So really think about these text structures this week, guys, and help have it apply to your reading. All right. Thanks, guys, and good luck studying.